Okay, I'm back and we're going to build off of ideas that were in the previous uh, video where we talked about inverted chords and bass lines. This is going to be some more bass stuff. We're going to talk about drones, we're going to talk about uh, passing tones, and we're going to circle back to some chordal ideas based off of some, you know, exploration of, of bass notes. Now, a drone is a consistent tone or a note that stays the same. Lots of traditional instruments from around the world have drones built into them. Stringed instruments like the sitar have, have drone strings that are intended to ring clear and unchanging while other stuff blends with it and changes around it. But that's just one example. You also have uh, single note stuff where a drone is specifically meant to be in the bass. Like, uh, like in Australian indigenous music, you have the, the didgeridoo, which produces a consistent bass tone. Uh, and in North American indigenous music, the, the drums essentially provide the same thing, a bass drone to sing over and create melodies. On guitar, you can use open strings as drones, obviously, and have chords. And this song by uh, the Almond Brothers band called Melissa uses those, so. Crossroads. Lovely song, but you can see what's going on there. They're just the basses, and then, and then, and then there's one flat six, five. So not that interesting a bass line, but. Well, we'll discuss it more in a second. Here's another example from, uh, well, not from the year 1979, but it's called 1979. It's from the 90s by the Smashing Puppets. <laughs> So, although that would look boring on paper if you just looked at, well, okay, what's the bass doing? Well, just two notes, not that interesting, right? It can still have a real cool effect because um, just like I discussed in the earliest videos in my music theory series, you can think about chord progressions as a journey. You've got a tonal center, a home, essentially, your one chord, and uh, you can go away from that by playing other chords, and then you can return to that. And the return, and even just the anticipation of the return, is exciting and drives interest in the song. So uh, you can still have those effects while keeping the bass the same. Um, because it's like keeping one foot planted at home, the other foot is still stretching out and going to new different places. And sometimes you end in weird, like yeah, I'm almost doing the splits over here, how's this gonna work out? But eventually when you come back, it is still a satisfying resolution. For example, when you, in this song you go, well, there it does, it does throw a five in the bass there. But you could, you know, go like that and still, it would still be... That would still be exciting when you get to the, um, to the chorus and you hit the, the one straight on. It's not some other combination. It's... Anyway. So drones are cool. Uh, fun to play around with, and you can discover cool stuff in the process. I'm sorry, I gotta change the lighting here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so uh, also passing tones are cool, which are kind of the opposite of a drone. A drone is this note that stays the same in the bass. Passing tones usually happen when you're doing more in the bass than you're actually doing in the rest of the chords. If you think about classic jazz where there's a, an upright bassist, that's usually the case. They're often playing notes that don't belong in an obvious way to the chords that are just around 
notes that do. And those are passing tones. They're notes that are between expected ones. We're going to break this down and look at it really simply in a case of going from a one chord to a six chord. So here's a one chord in the key of C. And here's a six, A minor. Now, an obvious bass line would be one, six. Nothing wrong with that. But you could also go one, seven in the bass, six. Now, you could think of this as its own chord, and you could be like, okay, what is that chord, and what should I call it, and how does it make sense uh, theoretically? Well, but you could also just relax, free up the bass, use your basic chords, your normal chords, and then just be like, look, I'm going to let the bass explore a little bit. If it's going in between the chords, I'm just going to allow it and see what happens, and if I like the sound of it, I'll keep it. Now that's an example of a diatonic passing tone. Diatonic just means it uses notes that belong to the key. So this note is a B, and there is a B note in the key of C, right? Because the notes as outlined on the white keys of the piano are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So it's diatonic. The alternative would be a chromatic passing tone, which is just a note that doesn't belong to the key that is inserted there. So. Flat seven, flat six, and so on. Now it doesn't just work in descending bass lines. You could go up. Anyway, free up the bass. You'll discover new possibilities for, for chords and for just sounds that you like, even if you don't understand what's going on. I mean, you can understand it in this way, and that's enough. You don't need to fully understand all the relationships between every note. You can just leave some be drones and just, if they sound good, keep it. And you can also do other stuff and explore around the expected notes. And again, if it works, keep it. Um, but over time and through experimentation and through, you know, copying other artists and learning their songs, some specific combinations of notes will start to earn a place in your repertoire of chords. And you'll just think of them, now it has a chord identity. It, just because I've come across it enough times or in distinct, important enough situations where now I think of it as a thing. I'm going to give you two examples of, of what those are for me. But for you, these ones might not be the most salient and others might be. And you'll start to figure them out and be like, oh, this is a whatever. Come up with a name for it based on what's going on. Um, but again, just approach it like you're freeing up the bass and you're discovering new possibilities. So some of those are a 4-5 chord. I think I picked up on this from playing music by the band. It's a 4 chord. I think you see here, is it my F is my 4 chord. It's a 4 chord with a 5 note in the bass. So I'm blending a 4 chord with a 5 chord, essentially. On its own, it has a lot of internal tension in it, right? Again, it's kind of pulling apart. tension gets resolved in the in the cadence so that's a cool possibility to be aware of another one is um i almost never use this one but i became aware of it in a really specific time when i was figuring out by ear the song saturn on piano by um stevie wonder it starts off on a four then goes five four so the chord raises up to a five, the bass stays the same, like a temporary drum. You can feel it pulling apart. And then it gets resolved. Just to live to us is our natural high. Those are just two examples. Again, you can discover your own. Free up the bass. Don't be overworried about what's going on theoretically and start exploring with the bass. You'll come up with cool possibilities and also end up with more compelling melodic bass lines too. There you go.